All right, so in this video, we're going to graph this cubic equation, uh, finding intercepts and using symmetry uh, to help make a table of values easier to, to complete. Okay, uh, so first thing let's do, let's find the x-intercept. Remember to find the x-intercept, we're going to replace y with 0. Okay, now I'm gonna, I've am gonna i got something here, I've got a binomial that can be factored, and it can actually be factored twice. So the first thing I want to do is take out a greatest common factor. I'm going to divide both these by x. I'm going to factor out an x term. And that leaves me a binomial of x squared minus 9. Okay, so if you divide x cubed by x, you get x squared. If you divide negative 9x by x, you get negative 9. Okay, now hopefully you recognize that this is one of those special patterns we can factor called a difference of squares. So I've got 0 equals x, and then I can factor x squared minus 9 as x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay, so what this means is I'm going to have three x-intercepts, and I'm going to go in order from smallest to largest. So if I solve this, if I set this factor equal to 0 and solve, I get negative 3. If I set this factor equal to 0, I get my second x-intercept of 0. And if I set this factor equal to 0, I get a positive 3. Okay, so my three x-intercepts are at negative 3, at the origin, and at 3. Okay, now, technically speaking, I've already found my y-intercept. Okay, if you have an x-intercept at the origin, then you have a y-intercept at the origin. Okay, but... Notice here, I can go ahead and still unplug in 0 for both x's, and I get y equals 0. So that's another way to determine the y-intercept, okay? So only three intercepts, and one of those actually occurs. You know, I could have found those either way, all right? Let's check symmetry, all right? With the x-axis, remember, we want to uh, replace y with negative y. Um, let's go ahead and multiply everything by negative 1 because we want to solve for y, and notice this does not match up, Okay. This doesn't match, so there is no x-axis symmetry here. Let's check y-axis symmetry. We're going to replace both x's with negative x. Okay, let's clean that up. When I cube a negative x, I end up with negative x cubed. When I multiply negative 9 times negative x, I get positive 9x. Again, notice this does not match, so this equation does not have y-axis symmetry. All right. Finally, let's check origin symmetry. I'm going to replace y with negative y and x with negative x. Okay, uh, so I'm cleaning up to do here. I'm going to leave this negative y alone for now. When I cube negative x, I get negative x to the third power. Negative 9 times negative x is positive 9x. Okay, and then if I multiply everything by negative 1, I get y equals x cubed minus 9x. Now, notice that matches the equation I started with. So this graph is going to have what we call origin symmetry. Okay, and that's very helpful. It's gonna help us make our table of values a little bit more easily. All right, so a lot of information here we can use to, to put into our table of values. So let's start out with the x-intercepts. Okay, at negative three, zero, at the origin, and then at three, zero. Okay, notice the origin here doubles as both the x-intercept and the y-intercept, okay? Now, cubic functions are a little bit more complicated than quadratic functions. Um, so I'm going to notice I've got more spaces here. I'm going to find a couple more points. Um, so I'm going to plug in negative 2, okay? Let's plug that into the original equation. You can see doing that here. And then let's do the steps. So when I cube a negative 2, I get negative 8. And then negative 9 times negative 2 is positive 18, okay? So when I substitute negative 2 into the, the equation for x, I get y equals positive 10, okay? Now let's do the same thing with negative 1, and then we'll talk about how the symmetry plays in. So if I substitute negative 1 in for x, I get y equals negative 1 cubed minus 9 times negative 1, which gives me negative 1 plus 9, which is positive 8, okay? Now, let's use symmetry here. So remember, origin symmetry means that I can change the, the signs of both the x and y coordinates, and that point will be on the graph. So if negative 2 comma 10 is on the graph, okay? Actually, let's go with negative 1 first. If negative 1, 8 is on the graph, then positive 1 and negative 8 will be on the graph. Notice that both the x coordinates and the y coordinates have changed to their opposites. 
we can do the same thing with negative 2 comma 10 using symmetry. So if negative 2 positive 10 is on the graph of this equation, then positive 2 negative 10 would also have to be on the graph. Okay? So this table of values is going to allow us to graph this equation, y equals x cubed minus 9x. It's not going to be exact because there's some other things in here that we're going to have to go over later on. But this table of values is going to give us a really, really good representation of what the graph of this equation looks like. So let's go plot these points and look at the graph. All right, so let's draw this graph again. We had our x-intercepts at negative 3, at 0, and at positive 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those first. Okay. Uh, then we had our points that we found uh, by, by plugging into the original equation and then using symmetry. So... My first point I found was negative 2 comma 10. It's up there at the top of the graph. And we had negative 1 positive 8. Okay. And then we used origin symmetry to find those two points on the in between these two intercepts. So at positive 1, negative 8, and then at positive 2, negative 10. Okay, and you can see that origin symmetry there. Um, and now we can just connect those dots. And again, we end up with a graph that looks like that, okay? Cubic functions have that form. Uh, we'll talk more about that form. We'll talk about end behavior um, and, and how to more precisely draw this graph. This is, again, this is a good representation of the graph, but this is not exact. We're missing a little bit of information uh, here. But for our purposes right now, uh, this is a good, good representation of the equation, okay? So focus on finding the intercepts. Focus on using symmetry to help making that table of values a little bit easier, okay? And that's how you graph that cubic function uh, using intercepts and symmetry.